Good day and welcome here with Learn Brizzy Page Builder with JP. We are getting closer to that promised date in September of the release of the Pro version. It feels so far away, but yet it's just around the corner. There isn't much new that I can show you in Brizzy Page Builder, but I've decided let's anyway do one or two videos per week. Let's look at some of the blocks they've got. Let's look at some other features and maybe even plugins that we can currently use with Brizzy. That would be very, very great. So today I have decided to drag in this element or this block over here because I liked what Brizzy had done to get to this kind of styling. We have a text over here and it's again a meet the team, but there is something nice that they've done to achieve this. In many other applications and page builders, you will get an element or a module that can perform this function by giving you the image plus the name plus the position. But currently in the free version of Brizzy, this isn't available. I'm not sure if it will be in the future, probably in a pro version. Let's begin by add a new block. And we're going to change our width to 85%. Let's do the same for ours. And from here, we are going to use three text elements. I'm going to delete this template that comes with it, the default, and then drag in. And I wish we could just have a click at. That would be nice. Add these three elements. So I'm going to change the text. And I've got two keyboards in front of me. Why on earth? Just to confuse myself even more. And then this one is meet meet the team and for this paragraph I'm just going to copy the text that Brizzy had used. Starting with the title at the top we can see under typography that it's above title and it's styled in this blue. Another thing that I want to point out is that if you go to settings, more settings, you will see that here on the margin it's 10 0, 0, 0. That means that they have reduced the bottom margin to zero because all text elements in Brizzy are brought in at a margin setting of 10 0, 10 0. Let me show you. If I click on this one that we brought in the people, go to settings, more settings, you'll see 10 0, 10 0. So I know that one should go down to zero. Then we're going to set our typography on a buff title and use this nice shiny shiny blue. For me the team the is heading two and our color is the second swatch from the left and the margins stay as they are. Heading two and then this one. Great and then for this nothing we need to do. Before we get to these graphic elements there is a spacer. Again we go over here to the left at elements Where's our spacer over there? Grab and drag, not drop and drag. Grab and drag, grab, drop and drag. Okay. And our setting for this one is 30 pixels. I'm going to type that in. Right. Next one, and I'm going to show you a feature that has been there, which I wasn't aware of, or I just overlooked. It's amazing the things that you can overlook, even though you are staring at it day in and day out. First, we're going to drag in some columns. So I grab the column element until I get that thick gray bar and drop it. Drag and drop, drop and drag, drag and drop. There we go. And then I'm going to duplicate. Now, normally I just go to this setting over here that says duplicate. But today I noticed, wait, what is this thing? Add a new column and what does it do? Well, lo and behold, it adds a new column, exactly what it does. So what is the difference between this one and this one? So I'm going to show you what the difference is by going to their block. If I click here on, what's his name? Dobrin? I cannot clearly see the blue. Do Dobrin Lovick. If I click on him and I duplicate, Brizzy is going to duplicate the column and all the contents inside. So now we have a double ganger, two manager CEOs. Very confusing setup at that company. Let me delete it 
Remember what it did. It duplicated it exactly. The parallel universe just became real. Now I'm going to say this one, add new column. It is going to add a new column without the elements, but it did retain all the settings of the column. So though I had put an image in the column, it's keeping that image within the column. This is not an image element. That little blue plus there shows you that there is no element at this moment inside this column. This is a background image of the column. You can see that if I go here to the column background, there is my image up there. All right, let's delete this one. So there is a difference between the two. If I say duplicate the column, this one, add new column, sorry, add new column. It's going to give me a new column, but it's going to be based on the settings of the column that I am doing it from. And if I say duplicate the column, this one over here, yes, it's going to copy everything in the column as well. Let's go to our column over here, our column. And as I just showed you, this is not an image element. This is an image background of the column. This lady drinking her soya latte, <laughs> um, you can see that is added as a background to this one. So let's go and add it. No offense to people who love soya, but <laughs> it doesn't accommodate me, that's all. Let's add our image here on the background. And uh, Casper comes in, he is our, our guy with the glasses. And what we are going to do is style and set up this column and then of course duplicate it three times to bring in the other images. So here we have two text elements and I will add these two text elements, drag in the first one and then drag in the second one. So let's type him and Casper, Casper, Casper Rays. And he is, he is the guy, the guy. Right. Let's see what they've done with this one. They've put this on heading six and they've used that brizzy blue. Heading six and brizzy blue. And they have centered it. And for this one, it's paragraph, white and centered. Paragraph, white, and we center it. Now, how do you get that at the bottom of the image? If you go here to your column and you click on their settings, you will see that you have the content alignment. You have it at the top, in the middle, or at the bottom. And we do that next. But you're going to see this is still not going to be very highly satisfactorily. The first thing we need to do is change our margin settings on these text elements. Remember, I told you any text element, the margin is 10, 0, 10, 0. If we look at what they did, we will find that is 10, 0, 0 for the top one. 10, 0, 0. And for the bottom one, it will probably be the opposite. 0, 0, 10, 0. But also notice that they've added another 10 pixels with this slider that says gap below. Let's do the same. Take the 10 for the top margin out. And we are going to add another 10 pixels here at the gap below. It's like when I get to 10, my hand just jumps and add another pixel. But still, how do we get this space here? How are we going to get Casper's face to show that he is indeed friendly? We're going to do that, and this is what I like. You know, sometimes you sit there and you think, am I going to add a margin? Am I going to add this? Am I going to add that? And sometimes there's just an easier workaround with this. And Brizzy, in their design of their blocks, make freely use of this element. And the more they use it, the more I copy them, the more I'm also starting to introduce it into how I design. And recently I've been working on a few other page builders where they didn't have this function. And I'm every time saying, where is my spacer? So we are going to grab a spacer. We're going to drag it in here above Casper's name and drop it. 
Not much has happened, but this is where things now get very nifty. Click on the spacer, and then you see the little blue dot, the handle, and drag it. Very, very nice, Peter. You see, Casper comes to life. You can choose based on the photos that you've made where you want this to go. The next thing that I also want to do is I want to give him some headroom. So, oh, sorry, go to column, go to the image, and I'm going to drag up much better. Casper, you are quite a good looking guy. And that's what they have done. Now, of course, in my image, you are not seeing the text very clearly. And the reason for that is that they have applied an overlay. Let's go again to theirs, click on it, and then here on colors. They've applied this swatch on the left and they've reduced the opacity to 50%. So we do the same, click on it, apply the one, and then reduce it to 50%. Makes it much darker. But this is how you're going to get that ability to let the text come through unless you do some photo editing with your images before you bring them in. Now let's go ahead and finish up our team just for good measure. I'm going to delete these guys quickly. Delete. Adios. Ciao. And then let's duplicate them. And from here we are now going to bring in the rest of our team. Okay, let's also do that. Give Tonya some headroom. And she is Tonya Styles. Or Tonya Styles. The girl. And for this one, let's see who is this. The team. Oh, it's Yutaro. 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 Is she? And he is the man. And uh, yes, yes, we cannot see very clearly at all. So definitely we'll maybe have to think in our images to actually make them even darker or look at using different style text. I mean, different colors for our text element. And let's just get his face also aligned. Otherwise, it looks very strange. There we go. Nice. And finally, let's bring in the boss. And this is Gecko the Chameleon. Yes, I know it's a chameleon. That's why I said Gecko the Chameleon. Uh, Gecko the Chameleon. Million. Right. And this is the main guy, the main boss, the boss. Okay. So there we've got our team. One thing that you have to understand that when you are going to be using images like this to present people and you need specific focus points and you are going to be doing that as a background and not as a image element, you need to get those images well done before you bring them into Brizzy because there is no way you can control the size or the focus in these background images at this moment. Let me just quickly show you what I mean. Let's drag in a new block and we've got two columns here. In my first column, I'm going to drag in an image. I'm using this one that is so, so unsplash. And then this is now the background image for this column. But for this one, I'm going to drag in the image element. Over here, I'm going to add the same image. Where is it? There. And there we go. So on the face, it looks everything is similar. But let me show you quickly on the image element, you have quite a few settings. For example, you have these handlebars in which you can drag the size of the image. You can change the height. There's a lot that you can do. Even if you click on the image and go to the image settings, you can zoom in and out. You also have this focal point ability, which is present in both. So there's a lot that you can do with this image. Change your height that we've worked with, the size, right? A lot of things that you can do with it. If you go back to the one that is a column background and you click on it and you go to background, you can 
only control the focal point. There's no way you can zoom in or zoom out, reduce the size or anything like that. So just be aware of it that that will be a problem if you want to do something like this and your images aren't cropped properly because when you're going to bring them in, you won't be able to remove them or rather move them around to the way you like. One thing I just want to point out before we say adieu for today is something that has been there. I had to go back to my own videos to go and check it and I don't know how I missed it. If you go into settings, you see and you go to more settings, you're on pageant and padding and margins. I've never noticed the percentage sign over here. Yeah, you see pixels. We are used to the pixel setting. I didn't even notice that percentage sign there. So if you are somebody who prefer working in percentages, then this is definitely the way to go for you. Let's say you want to work here on this right margin and you want to apply 5% to the right margin. Then you click on the percentage and you will see now that part is highlighted. And if you type in five now, let's take the zero out, it is 5% from this margin. I often like to work with percentages and I actually feel I mentioned it somewhere in the forum. Hey, percentages would be nice. And every bro everybody probably thought, what? IQ of a brain, the percentages are there. So if you were in the same situation like me and you only saw the pixels, there's actually a percentage ability in there. It would be nice also to have n values in the future. You know, I, I do like that control. Not sure if we'll get it in the free version. Again, something that we can mention as a feature that we would like to see in the pro version. I'm not sure what do you like? Do you use other settings except for pixels? I quite like percentages and I quite like in values, especially when I'm working with my text. So those kind of things would be very nice to see in future features here at Brizzy. Right, we're in the middle of the week. If you're following, it is Wednesday. And if you watch this video in the future, then it was Wednesday. See you in the next video.